Hey everybody, Chris Raygun here. Welcome to another episode of Glasses Off. Uh, an unplanned episode of Glasses Off, I will admit, but an episode nevertheless. Um, I was in the middle of working on uh, the next Raygun recap episode, which is why the, the green screen is up behind me and why uh, my room is in a bit of a state of disarray at the moment. Uh, but, you know, I was, I was perusing the internet looking for some stories to poke fun at, have some fun with. Uh, when I happened across this story on Twitter... Hashtag hang Ayaz Nizami. It's a hashtag that was trending in Pakistan that was essentially uh, calling for the execution of an atheist blogger who uh, dared to commit the sin of blasphemy. And keep in mind he was arrested in Karachi, Pakistan, uh, which is a, a place where, uh, yeah, blasphemy is actually punishable by death, so he's absolutely done for. His life is over because he dared to share a dissenting opinion. And he, he even did it under a pseudonym, and they still found him, so he's, he's pretty much fucked at this point. And before this whole story caught the attention of the West, a lot of the tweets in that hashtag uh, read a little something like these. Call us terrorist or extremist or whatever, but he must be hanged. Hashtag hang Ayaz Nizami. Hang every hidden and exposed blasphemer. He must be dragged through the streets and hanged. Blasphemy is not freedom of speech. A terrorist can kill many, but a blasphemous hurt the feelings of millions. And the thing that bugs me about this uh, most, I think, is the fact that this thought process, this whole, yeah, fucking kill him because he, he, he's an atheist, that is a thought process that is the rule of law in places like Pakistan. And the apologetics that I see bestowed upon this religion that is never offered to any other religion or, or group or anything else, it, it really gets under my skin. I am going to lay into Islam pretty hard this video, uh, but before I do that, I, I, I do kind of want to share with you guys where my disdain for religion as a general concept comes from. I just think uh, you hearing my perspective and, and why I think the way I think uh, would kind of be... It, it would be just a bit of useful context as to the arguments that I'm uh, going to make here today. Things are going to get a little heavy this episode, a little personal, a little depressing. Uh, so I apologize in advance for that. Hashtag trigger warning. Um, uh, but I, I promise you guys the next video is going to be f significantly more lighthearted than this one. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's just kind of get on with it. I was born into a Catholic family because when you're Puerto Rican, that's just that's just what you tend to be. And it was it was a fairly harmless uh, version of the religion. There were there were no anti-gay sentiments. There were no anti-atheist sentiments. It was a very neutered form of Catholicism uh, to the point where you could actually argue that none of us were actually Catholics. We were probably just um, I don't want to say moderate. I guess like really lenient, really lax Catholics. I guess you believed in heaven and hell, and you believed in that sort of thing. But there were really no guiding principles as far as, like, how you should treat people. It was a very love-thy-neighbor kind of uh, school of thought that I grew up in. But I remember this moment in uh, 2001 where I, uh, I, I learned that my sister had been killed in a drunk driving accident um, where the, uh, the driver... The driver was uh, intoxicated, and he hit her. He hit, he hit my sister's car. Uh, she didn't make it. The driver made it. Uh, everybody else involved in the incident made made it, but she did not. And I remember everyone around me—family, friends, uh, people at church, people at my Catholic school—echoing the same kind of sentiment, which was, "Oh, it was all part of God's plan. This was this was all part of the plan. This was intended to happen. This was this is this is just God's way." I want you guys to keep in mind that I was seven years old upon hearing all this, and uh, even as someone who didn't really fully buy into the religion, as somebody who was more than happy to skip church to play Crash Bandicoot, as someone who didn't really give a shit who Jesus Christ was, as somebody who barely understood the concept of sin or even cared about it, even as somebody who was that disinterested and that, un n that non-devout to the religion, I remember that moment and that concept torturing me for years. I did not have a normal childhood at that point. I was thinking about things at seven years old that you probably shouldn't be thinking about. <laughs> I had all these questions about, like, is, is my sister in hell? Is, is she being tortured for eternity? Is she in heaven? Can I still speak to her? Is there some way to get her back? If she's still alive in the, in the spirit world or whatever the fuck, is there a way to, to communicate with her? Is she gone forever? It, all these... It's a very torturous concept to, to unload on a child at that age. And I can't stress this enough, that was the effect of one of the most benign forms of a neutered religion 
on someone who barely believed. That's the kind of power that lies behind these concepts. That's the kind of power that lies behind uh, religion and, and the power of belief. It can fuck you up even if you don't even buy it. Even if you're just surrounded by people who do believe it and you yourself don't believe it, you still hold on to these things and they still affect you in fucking serious ways. I have a special disdain for Catholicism and Christianity for that very reason. I mean, I, I have uh, plenty of people in my family and p plenty of friends who consider themselves devout, um, even though I think most of them really aren't devout. I, th I think most of them are like I was at, at seven years old, like, hey, you know, my family is this. I guess I'm this as well. And the reason I bring this up is because I feel like people get really defensive about these things. I feel like when, when, you, when you criticize a religion that is, I guess, something that most of your family follows, you feel like uh, your family is being attacked personally. And I just want to let you guys know that's not the fucking case. When I, criti when I criticize Catholicism or when I talk about how much I genuinely can't stand it and what it did to me as a kid... Uh, I'm not disowning my family. I'm not, I'm not saying that my family is now bad people or that, um, you know, everybody in my family is a bad person for believing this thing or even for teaching me that thing, even though I would argue that it's, <laughs> it's almost tantamount to child abuse. I think most people who grow up in the Western world under these religions turn out to be good people. And while I don't know much about the Muslim faith in the Western world, I would, I would be willing to bet that a majority of Muslims growing up in the West are, have similar backgrounds. They go, they go to mosque and they're taught love thy neighbor. Uh, they're not really told anything about killing apostates and killing atheists. That's how I imagine a Western uh, life under a religion would be because that's how it was for me. That's how it was for most of my friends. It's taken from this very monolithic thing and, and neutered into this benign form of just a harmless spirituality. I think that that's genuinely what happens under Western law and under Western rules. Because let me tell you, I have plenty of Muslim friends who say they're devout, and a bitch, I've seen you eat bacon. Like, come on, let's not kid ourselves. But in places like Pakistan, uh, where Islam isn't just the major religion, but it has a heavy influence on the rule of law, that's a very, very, very different scenario. These are places where women are property. These are places where uh, having acid thrown into women's face is such a common occurrence that there, there are punchlines and jokes about it. And yet you see articles like this. Muslims are the true feminists by the Huffington Post. We are outraged when a Christian refuses to bake a cake for a gay wedding. But when a man is being sentenced to death, in an Islamic country for simply sharing his disbelief, sharing an alternate opinion, I don't even hear about it until I look for something to talk about on Twitter. When you have things like what's happening in Canada right now, where, where they just passed a motion uh, for anti-Islamophobia and how, like, I, I guess anything that is considered hateful towards Islam now falls under this category of things that you're not allowed to do, and while it's not a law, it's still a motion by the government that no other religion has. When you have things like the Charlie Hebdo massacre where, where militant Islamists killed cartoonists over drawings of their prophet, over a fucking drawing. And you had articles like this immediately afterwards. Why Charlie Hebdo attack is not about Islam. Is Islam to blame for the shooting of Charlie Hebdo in Paris? Yes. Yes it is. It's pretty fucking obvious. And that's not to say that these horrible things wouldn't happen if religion didn't exist. Insanity always finds a way. There are always reasons for people to do insane shit, and we're never going to stop that. The problem with religion, in my opinion, and w what I think is most true about Islam today, but is still true about Christianity in places like Africa, and was true about Christianity back in, in times like the Dark, Dark Ages and the Crusades, is that religion guides insanity to specific targets. And that's never a good thing. That's never something that we should be just casually defending. There would not have been a Charlie Hebdo massacre if it wasn't a general rule in the, in, in the belief of Islam that you cannot draw the Prophet Muhammad. You cannot visually represent the Prophet Muhammad. It's pretty fucking clear that that wouldn't have happened if that idea wasn't a thing. And that idea stems from Islam. No other person would have gotten upset over those images. You know how I know? Because there are just as many, there are, there are even more Christians in the world who are just as devout, and there are plenty of images of the Pope acting, being retarded and looking stupid, and no one has been killed over it 
as far as I can tell in recent memory. The same thing is true with the Pulse nightclub shooting. The same thing is the same thing is true with 9/11. The same thing is true with the San Bernardino incident. We will never defeat irrationality and violence and senseless aggression. That those are traits that will be with us for until the end of time. Those are just the pitfalls of humanity. Um, but just because something can't be completely eradicated doesn't mean that we should make excuses for it. Especially when that irrationality and violence and senseless aggression is directed at specific groups. These belief systems clearly negatively affect women, gays, and atheists. These are people who are outright targeted by these belief systems. We can't just make excuses for that shit. And what I want is for us to be even-handed when it comes to this stuff, because we can admit when Christianity is at fault for something. We can admit that Anders Breivik had a clear Christian manifesto. We can all agree that Christianity set us back hundreds of years during the Dark Ages and during the Crusades. We can all agree on all of these faults that, huma that, that Christianity has. But we can't... But, it, but it's only ever up for debate when it's Islam as the subject. And I understand that this isn't all just in a vacuum. I do believe that what we're seeing now with this incredible leniency towards Islam, even though uh, a lot of the practices in that religion are, are objectively barbaric, I think a lot of that stems from an overcorrection on our part for the bigotry that uh, we kind of were totally okay with uh, towards Muslim, Muslim Americans and Muslims in, in general after 9-11. I had a friend of mine who was treated really fucking poorly after 9-11, and unjustly so. And I believe that all of this leniency is, is probably a bit of overcorrection for that. But it's an overcorrection nevertheless. We can't overcompensate for our failures by ignoring very, very real problems uh, just because they might make us uncomfortable to talk about. And I, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Um, and I know I could have gone in depth about how bad Christianity is. I understand that. Um, but I, I just want to focus this topic on this one thing. If you've listened to this video at all, you, you should probably be aware that I, I don't have any love for Christianity. In fact, I probably hate it a little bit more just because I had to, I had to go through it personally. But, um, I guess that's all I wanted to say. I apologize if this video was a bit heavy, a bit serious. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I do kind of want to get back to making fun content for you guys, uh, but I, I just saw this whole hang Ayaz Nizami thing, and it, and it really kind of lit a fire under me, it really kind of, I don't know, it, it, uh, <laughs> the apologetics are really getting on my nerves, and, uh, I think I've said my piece, um, feel free to disagree, I, I'm open to any debates on this topic, because I know it's a very sensitive issue, and I know there are very many people from different backgrounds who might be able to provide some more, um, insight on what I've said today, uh, but I think based on my experience, uh, based on my outlook on things, I hope that I was able to make it clear to you why I think the way I do about these things and maybe give you some insight as to my thought process on them. And uh, yeah, so now that you know uh, Chris Reagan, wacky Chris Reagan's deep, <laughs> deep analysis of Islam, uh, we can get back to having some fun. Uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Uh, next video will be more fun, I promise. Peace. Love you.